Hey there, Lorcana lovers. My name's Lizard, and today I'm excited to show you this new Emerald Steel Locations deck. I've had so much fun playing with this deck over the course of the last week. I've had really good success with it, and I do think you guys are going to enjoy this one. So, before we get into it, please guys, for me, subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. Thank you so much. Now, let's get into it. Okay guys, so once again we are going to use Dreamborn.ink to break this deck down. I will leave a link in the description so you guys can check this deck out whenever you'd like. And right off the bat you see this deck is about $200 to build. Now sadly there's not really a whole lot you can do to change that price at the moment. This Ursula is really the reason why this is so expensive. She, You're, you're going to need four copies of her and she's sitting at like 30 bucks and she really does uh, she, she's the powerhouse of this deck. Without her, it's going to struggle quite a bit. Another character that really pops off in this deck is John Silver. Obviously, we're running a lot of locations, so that he, he's right at home there. No pun intended. So, let's get into it, guys. We're going to have three copies of Captain Hook. This is such a great one drop. We're going to have four copies of Flynn Rider. And this card's excellent when paired with Prince John because he is gonna allow you to draw a card when your opponent discards a card. And let's have a look at Prince John real quick. This card's incredible. He has ward, so he's hard to deal with. You kinda just, you don't really ever want to exert him unless you're getting to a point in the game where you've, you know, you have a lot of the card draw you would need and you're really just trying to close out the game. So uh, in the beginning games though, you are leaving him up a lot, like I said, and his ability is great whenever your opponent discards one or more cards you may draw a card for each card discarded. So we play into that a lot. This Ursula, we're running three copies of. She is so great against a lot of matchups, including uh, your Ruby decks and your Amber Steel Songs decks. She is going to have your opponent discard a song card from their hand, and you even get to choose which card it is. So that is so much fun. Throwing away Be Prepared or Grab Your Swords can really hurt this deck, so that's fun to throw those away. Next, we have four copies of Mr. Smee. Really great two drop. And if he's paired with the Captain Hook, he's not gonna get any damage on him. But once again, we're not all that concerned about him. He's still just such a valuable card, even if he's accruing that damage. Like I said, we had the four copies of Prince John, four copies of this Ursula. What a strong card. So whenever this character sings a song, you may play that song again from your discard for free and then put it onto the bottom of your deck. So, it's not even discarding the song afterwards. You're just replenishing it back into your deck. You don't have to worry about using up all your songs. Ursula is such a fun card to use, and paired with these two songs especially, it's just devastating to your opponent. Sudden Chill, if you have a Prince John in play, which is usually the goal, you guys will see in a little bit here, it's great to have a Prince John out, just before you sing Sudden Chill with Ursula, and you're gonna have them discard their at least two cards because she's gonna sing it twice, and you're going to draw two cards. And she's also a menace when she sings Let the Storm Rage On. This one's gonna be dealing damage while also drawing you cards. Next, we have two copies of Benja. This is included just because of those pesky items that we're gonna need to deal with. Next, we have four copies of the John Silver. Self-explanatory, guys. This card is paired so well with locations. For each location you have in play, this character gains resist plus one and plus one lore. So if you can load up the locations and get him in play, your opponent just has to respect how powerful that can be. So they're going to have to either deal with him right away or spend a lot of resources dealing with all of these locations. Next up... We have two copies of this beast. This is yet another great card to deal with items. He's seeing a lot more play these days because these item decks are just getting more and more popular. And he quests for two. So honestly, just a, a pretty decent card to include. Like I said, we're running two copies of it. So I think two's enough. You guys can be the judge of that. Maybe you'll add more. Maybe you'll decide to not have the two Benjas and do four beasts. It's up to you. I, I think this even split here works out pretty well for me. We're doing four copies of the Tinkerbell Giant Fairy. Once again, this is just one of my favorite cards of all time. Absolutely love the Tinkerbell. 
You guys have seen this card enough by now to know what she does, and I really enjoy running four copies of her in this deck. You saw these songs, Sudden Chill, Let the Storm Rage On, four copies of each of those. And then our locations, guys. We're running four copies of the DeVille Manor, just your vanilla location, getting you one lore every turn with four willpower. It doesn't hang out or it doesn't stay in for too long, especially uh, this bayou is the same way. It doesn't really stick around for very long. So you really have to use your best judgment when you start playing these locations. If you have nothing else to play for your one, two, three, four curve, sometimes it is fun just to get the locations down. It slows them down from questing and it usually allows you to accrue a little bit of lore in the meantime. So we're running four of the Deville Manor, two of the Bayou, and then four Nottinghams, another vanilla location. And then we are running three Cusco's Palace. I don't ever find myself actually utilizing the effect of this location, just at seven willpower. Helps it stick around a little bit longer. And once again, the John Silver synergy is incredible with these locations. And then four copies of Fang. This is the best location in this deck. I do find myself utilizing this uh, effect of, uh, the effect of this location. So when you move a character here, it gains ward and evasive. This is awesome for your Ursula to move her here and continue singing songs. She's just way harder for your opponent to deal with. And also you're gaining two lore every turn that this sticks around. Granted, it does only have six willpower, so it's rather easy for your opponent to deal with. However, the more time they spend worrying about your locations, that is slowing them down and you're allowed to do other things in the meantime with building up your board state with characters or you know, discarding cards from their hand. In fact, a lot of times you'll see, just because this is slightly a discard deck, they don't always have the amount of cards they would need to deal with these locations. So you'll find yourself in situations where you're just winning games pretty quickly. Either your opponent's gonna get really frustrated and concede, or you're just gonna put the game uh, in your corner very quickly with discarding their cards and maintaining a really great board state. So the tempo's good, and you just have a lot of things going for you with this deck. And quite honestly, guys, this is decently easy to pilot. You know, you're, you're still looking for your one, two, three curve. You really always want to have this Ursula in your opening hand. It's nice to have Prince John in your opening hand. The ideal play for me is to have a Captain Hook on one, a Flynn Rider on two, or potentially an Ursula on two, depending on your matchup, and you want to discard a song card. However, uh, that's your discretion. But Captain Hook, Flynn Rider, and then Ursula. Okay, so then by your turn four, you can then play a, hopefully a Prince John and sing Sudden Chill with Ursula. That is the ideal opening for this deck. If you can pull that off, you're usually going to win the game. Now, the John Silver location synergies are definitely like a B plan for this deck. And that's fine because it does still uh, put a lot of pressure on your opponent to have to deal with these things. But first and foremost, getting the Ursula combos are definitely what wins you more games. But having the John Silver with the locations as a backup plan is just really fun and I feel very secure playing this deck into most matchups. So without further ado guys, let us get into some Pixelborn gameplay. Okay guys, so once again we are going to speed these games up just to save you some time and I will commentate on what I'm doing. The first matchup is against Sapphire Ruby. This is a really fun deck to womp on just because I'm used to it womping on me when I play Sapphire Steel. So any opportunity I get to crush it, I thoroughly enjoy it. We have the Ursula in our opening hand and we have the Sudden Chill in our opening hand. So, so far, so good. Now our only option for a one drop is a location. We're gonna ink the Bayou just cause it has less willpower than the DeVille Manor. Now you'll see that guys, this is a pretty quick game. We're able to get exactly what we want to get done, and that is just discard the cards in their hands and stop them from uh, drawing a bunch of cards. They are gonna get their early game ramp, but that's okay. You'll see that we end this pretty quickly. We got our Flynn Rider down, start threatening some lore early on. They did find their quill, but that's okay. 
because we will soon be just discarding cards and unless they have a way to draw more, that quill kind of is a hindrance against a discard deck. We get our Ursula in play, and now next turn, we will be able to either deal with one of their... Uh, it's a Maui. It takes out our location, so whatever. Maui's a menace taking out locations, but we did find the Benja. So at this point, we can start having them discard some cards, the only cards they have in their hand. And we will then play our Benja to get rid of that quill. And we are in pretty good shape. We don't need the Ursula. This deck does not run a lot of songs, if any. So she's not really helpful in this. We're already, we're already pressing quite a lot of lore. And we have a location in play. We're going to clean up this Maui right now. You guys see how much fun that Ursula is, being able to sing these songs twice. They have no cards in hand. Sure, they have more ink than us, but without cards in their hand... There's not a lot they can do with that ink. So we are in very good shape. Already halfway there, guys. You see how quickly we can close out games with this deck. At this point, they see they do not have anything to stop us, so they concede. Okay, guys, so next up we have a match against Amber Emerald. This is an interesting deck, but once again, you will see we end this game rather quickly, and that's just what this deck likes to do. If you see the cards you need to see early on, you're going to end the game quickly. For the mulligan, we really want to see that Ursula, so let us get rid of a couple cards. We don't need the two Flins, and yes, we find the Ursula. That's fantastic, and we also have our hands on a sudden chill. So right away, we are in great shape, and we have the Prince drawn as well. So if we can get that combo off early enough... The, the game's pretty much going to end very quickly. I'm inking a Captain Hook, playing a Flynn. We're going to start pressing for a lot of Laura. If they have the Queen Shift, they will deal with this location very quickly, which is fine because we still have every all the necessary tools in our hand just to start having them discard cards. And being that they paired with Emerald and not Steel, I don't believe they have a whole lot of ways to draw cards on their end. So they're going to struggle against our discard for sure. I decide to leave Flynn active just because I know his queen's going to clean him up right away. And I want to get the card draw from Flynn off the uh, Prince John. So next turn, if he decides or she, he or she decides to attack into that Flynn, they're going to be discarding a card, allowing me to draw. And then I will play Sudden Chill. So they're going to be discarding three cards in one turn which will definitely be devastating. And then in turn, I will be drawing three cards from the Prince John. So they're just going to go ahead and quest. It's really, you know, their only option. They don't feel threatened. I don't really have anything in my hand to deal with their queen. Unfortunately, they pull down an Ursula and get rid of my sudden chill, which kind of stinks. But I still have the Flynn Rider to hopefully draw me some cards if they decide to challenge into him. And I've got a second Ursula. Okay, so they are, looks like they're running an Amber Emerald discard kind of deck. So that's their way of drawing cards as Prince John. Copycats. Oh, we find another Sudden Chill, which is excellent. Pop the Ursula back down. And I could just hard cast this, and I do choose to do that just because I need to slow them down. Uh, at this point, things are decently even. And I know they're just going to keep discarding cards from my hand. So it's just, we're going tit for tat, throw them the well played. And now we're in a great position. We can start cleaning up their problem characters, which is definitely this queen. She's able to quest and have other characters challenge into you and they won't receive any damage. We find two locations. It's gonna be hard for them to deal with those now that I got rid of that queen. Nice to see that Sudden Chill go into the ink. However, I have no cards on my hand anyway, so that was definitely the right choice for them. And they're not going to get the effect off that Ursula, but we do find the Let the Storm Rage On, and we're gonna draw some cards off this. We draw into another Storm, which is awesome. Let's go ahead and use that. Really start to clean up their side and just press more lore. So guys, we're in a great spot right now. 
and they didn't get what they needed, and so they just conceded. Next up, we have a game into Amber Steel Songs. So for the mulligan, we do we find our Ursula early on, which is great. We don't need the John Silvers just yet because we're not going to have the locations. He's more of an end game character or mid to end game character if you can load up locations all in one turn. And we find a second Ursula and a Prince John. So, so far, this is going all right. We didn't have the one drop, but that's okay. We do have the two Ursulas and the Prince John. And we will then try to discard some songs early on. See, they've got three songs in their hand. And I definitely wanted to get rid of the Bare Necessities because we really value our songs as well and we can't have them discarded. So from here, they could shift into that uh, five cost queen, but instead they drew into another Bare Necessities. So that kind of stinks. They're definitely gonna get rid of our Let the Storm Rage on. Hopefully we find another song here soon. And in the meantime, we will still prepare for it and just quest with our Ursula. So when you're playing this deck, you kind of, you always want to prepare for those songs. If you can get your Ursula in on turn three, that is the way to go. And you see, sometimes you just, you really luck out. We got to let the Storm Rage on. We can deal four damage to them, draw two cards, and then we can play our Prince John and potentially draw into a sudden chill, which would be excellent because we can start discarding cards from their hand while we draw cards. Having three Ursulas early on is quite a threat. Now, if only we can find all the songs that we need, we don't need all of those Ursulas. So we will ink one and just start loading up our locations. This gives them a, quite a lot to have to deal with. They find two flutes, which is going to just be a little bit slow at the moment. I don't feel threatened with the Ursula. We'll clean up the Benja. And at this point, it feels like smooth sailing. They're already throwing me the well played. I'm thinking they don't feel too great about this. They go ahead and hard cast a whole new world and didn't get what they needed and just concede. It always feels great when you can get them to hard cast a whole new world. Going into Amber Steel songs can be scary but like i said if you get those ursulas early on and you find your songs early on you're going to be in great shape okay guys and the last matchup today is against ruby amethyst this is a pretty straightforward ruby amethyst deck and once again it's such a popular deck and people are still doing really well with it so beating a ruby amethyst deck always feels great we find our ursula early on we find three of the songs we're going to need and we also have our one drop and our two drop so right off the bat things are going really well we get to go on turn one and we're going to play our captain hook just because i want to pressure a little bit on the board they usually have uh, either like the olaf or the rafiki uh, or the mini so it's nice to have some pressure on the board they could play a Teeth and Ambition, so I'm going to go ahead and quest with Captain Hook just in case. A lot of times you will find them using Teeth and Ambitions on their turn two, and their character survives while yours is banished. They did not have the Teeth, which is great, so Captain Hook lives another day. Uh, I'm not going to risk it this time because they could have the Madame Mim Fox. Instead, they decide to sing Friends and draw some cards. We have our Ursula in play, and I think it's a great idea to get two Ursulas in play because at this point, we don't have to worry about a Be Prepared or Medusas or Tremaines, so why not load up with the Ursulas? We have all the songs that we need to be singing with Ursula, and we can just start discarding cards from their hand. Next turn, we can basically clean up anything they have on the board with our two remaining Let the Storm Rage On. So they could play uh, a fox or a crab. They clean up one of the Ursulas, which is okay. We still have our second one and we can sing the storm and deal with this crab. So before inking, sometimes it's a good idea if you have any kind of card draw to use that first and then decide what you want to ink just because sometimes you, you can make a mistake and ink the wrong thing. 
And it's just always best to see all of your options before making a decision. At this point, they have nothing to bounce for a fox, so I'm not worried about that. I go ahead and quest with everything. They find the rabbit. That's fine. They can draw cards. We will probably discard some more of them anyway. We will get rid of this rabbit, drawing more cards for us. And at this point, we can move Ursula to our location, which is awesome because she's going to have ward and she's going to be evasive. We actually have two of these fangs and they're gonna also be gaining us two lore each turn. So that, like I said earlier in the video, fang is the best location in this deck. And if you're able to utilize its uh, ability there, it, it really makes things difficult for your opponent. Now, thankfully he didn't have a Maui because the Maui could have crushed that location quite quickly. However, Ursula still would have been safe for one more turn. We find our Prince John and we're gonna ink the Mr. Smee. Now they have three locations to deal with as well as our Ursula and Prince John will be questing or Prince John will be questing for two, but Ursula could potentially still pose quite a threat to them if I draw into another sudden chill. They could potentially throw a Be Prepared down this turn. However, um, it's still not gonna be enough for them. They, they really don't have much of a choice. They had to use it, but it would have been nice if they drew into a Maui as well to clean up one of the locations. But once again, we're just in such a great spot at this point. I don't wanna play the Flynn just because they have enough ink to play the Tremaine and or the Medusa. So we're gonna hang on to him. They find a goat, so sad, not enough. And there you go, guys. We win a game against Ruby Amethyst. Well, there you have it, folks. I really hope you enjoy this deck. Please give it a try. I, I know you'll have some fun with it. Playing discard is really a lot of fun. Playing against discard is awful. So it, it, it is a lot of fun to see your opponent get frustrated. However, you, you got to sympathize a little bit because everybody knows just how frustrating it can be to play into a discard deck, uh, especially one that's loading up the board with locations. So not only are you losing all of your cards, but now they just have a, such a board presence that even if you draw into, say, your grab your swords or a be prepared, you still have all these locations to deal with. So it's so much fun to play with. And it's a really good solution for those of you who want to play an aggro deck, but don't want to have the threat of say, all the steel decks that are running around right now. So this deck isn't necessarily an aggro deck, but it does close games out really fast. So if you're somebody like me who doesn't always enjoying, who doesn't always enjoy rather uh, kind of the slog fest of just control matchups and or mirror matchups with control decks that last forever this is a really fun solution to that you can close out games very quickly like you saw we played into two of the most popular decks in the meta at the moment which is amber steel and ruby amethyst so as you saw guys if you draw the right cards you're gonna win fast and you're gonna frustrate the hell out of your opponent which Let's be honest guys, sometimes that's just so satisfying, especially playing into these decks that you see so often, like Amber Steel Songs and Ruby Amethyst. It's just pretty rewarding to crush them and <laughs> only spend, you know, four minutes of your time doing so. So if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, like I said earlier, I'm going to be bringing you at least one deck a week, a new deck for you to try out. It might be competitive, it might be casual, but it's guaranteed to be fun. And if you guys love this game as much as I do, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out so much and I just, I really enjoy bringing you guys this content and I love to hear your feedback. And as always, be kind and have a wonderful day. La -da -da, la -da -da, la -da -da.